when this fight first started, I wholly expected someone to come in and save Tanjiro. But basically everyone's fighting underground. And he's holding it down by himself. He has set his heart ablaze, and it is amazing. <laughs> There's such good setup for it, too. Like, for them to be able to beat an upper rank demon, not only considering what happened to Rengoku, but also the fact that they've never done that before, ever. That would be such a momentum changer for both sides. Although it's not without its major dangers, right? Doing that brings the heat. But we can handle the heat because we have all set our hearts ablaze. Also, my respect for the Hashira and just the demon slayers in general just keeps going up because they're basically facing certain death. Like, if no one's ever beaten an upper ranking demon, almost inevitably in your career, you're gonna meet an upper ranking demon and you're gonna die. Imagine that morning commute. Like, is this the day that I meet an upper ranking demon? It was hard enough for me to get up and do my job when I was a teacher. Although, in a way, teaching is sort of like death. Episode 6, Layered Memories. Last episode's flashbacks weren't enough. It's the shoes for me. <laughs> It's so incredibly frustrating fighting these demons. Like, you spend so much time fighting their projectiles, like Ball Girl. Oh, what was that? So you can control them super remotely, too. And they failed. Is she getting the data from the fight? But, no, that's not it. Not, yeah. yeah, she got the data from the scarf. Right, this is her ticket to pleasing Muzan. Get, no, <laughs> why are you here? Speaking of weaknesses for the Demon Slayers, this guy's a liability only on one side. The work just got that much harder for Tanjiro. Yeah, he knows it too. He's like, uh-oh. Yeah. Whoa, what the heck? What was that? What in the world? Damn. I think her cover is blown. Oof. This is so... Crazy for Tanjiro. Where did he get cut shoulder? Damn, that's a deep cut. And she's really consumed with the Hashira now, but if she was thinking more clearly and more strategic about Tanjiro, she would use this to destroy him. Because he could not turn his back on these people. Instead, it feels like she just activated him. Like, she's made him more pissed. His eyes are bleeding. <laughs> and that was when she knew she... Messed up. I've had a theory since she showed up that her arrogance would be the thing that undid her. I don't know the outcome of it. I suspect they're gonna defeat her. And that would be really cool because if that were to happen, it's more than just defeating the, the demon of the Ark, right? It's like, there's no going back from that. That's a turning point for everyone. I mean, so far, only Muzan, interestingly enough, seems to have any fear of them at all. Maybe that has to do with the fact that he lives in a state where there are no threats, and so he's more conscious of threats, whereas the upper ranking demons always live under the threat of Muzan. So the, the Hashira is sort of lesser in their minds, but that is gonna be, I think, what does it. You have a long conflict like this, or you have any kind of tension at all. The unthinkable is going to happen eventually and the tides will turn. It's just inevitable. As long as there's life, there's hope. And also you put people in a corner long enough, you put people against their back, you leave them no way out. You know, there's a passage in, I think it's Sun Tzu's Art of War, where it's like, if you wanted to defeat your enemy, always give them a back door they can escape from. That way they're fighting sort of half-heartedly because in their minds they know I don't have to fight. If you put your enemies against the wall and their options are fight or die, they're going to fight with everything they have because they have nothing else. And that's sort of the feeling that I'm getting from the Hashira and the Demon Slayers. They've just been pushed to their limit, especially with the Rengoku thing. And the upper ranking demons have sort of been living in it's weird to say, but peace, relatively. Akaza didn't seem too worried about Rengoku, but at least Akaza respected Rengoku. This lady does not respect any of them, and I think she's going to pay for that. She just woke up an absolute monster. Kamado-kun. And flashback. Oh, is this Daddy Rengoku? We could add another Hashira, right? Coming out of retirement? This feels great. Do some good, man. Pick yourself up. And to his credit, that's really hard to get out of. You gotta go like deeper into the pain before you can get out of it. A lot of mourning. He learned from a book. Damn, we love books in this channel. Honestly, his mom seems to have been a bigger influence in her way, just spiritually. She was his last thought, right? Right, right. He feared it initially. So that's what it is. I was curious why he was attacking him for having that, that ability. There was some threat there to him. Oh, really? <laughs> of course. Acts of saving early on. Now he's got the power, though. Well, either way, he's got it, right? Probably there's a metaphor there. Maybe it doesn't matter. He was born with this. Whatever this is, the thing that makes him Tanjiro, that's not fake. That's who he is. To the bone. I'm expecting him to get help, but imagine Tundra just does this. Holy crap. 
grabbing onto the scarf. Ooh, she looks scared. She looks like she's fighting for her life. That felt different. That felt like desperation. Oh, so she's met father. Maybe it's Muzan's memory that she inherited. Yeah, it feels like it's probably Muzan. And Muzan definitely fears Tanjiro, which means he's had exposure to the sun breathing. I wonder how that went down. I'm guessing oh, maybe Muzan killed Tanjiro's father. That would make a lot of sense. Oh, or did he die of illness? I'm a little bit fuzzy on the details. I mean, obviously Muzan survived, but it was enough to give him that impression that he was in real danger, which has stuck with him to this day. And maybe that was the first time he felt fear of any kind from a human. I like how these mice are becoming a regular feature. Body improvement mice. <sighs> this guy wants to get back out there and fight. This guy has three wives, not enough attention for him. <laughs> Some people are never satisfied. That's probably why he has three wives. What you have is probably going to be in some way proportional to what your ambition is. Long time ago. I mean, demons also have pain and suffering. They definitely have fear. They're just sort of like jerk humans. Sympathetic. Ugh. Backstory black and white stills. Looks badass right now. He's not thinking anymore. And not in a bad way. He's just acting. He was questioning himself earlier. She didn't realize what's going on. She's got this power in him. Power of the sun. There was something holding him back before. There was some sort of separation between himself and the moves. That seems to be gone. There's that fear. Oh, she's running! Oh my god, I can't believe that just happened. Wait, for real? No. Oh, she's hanging on by a literal thread. <laughs> That was so close. I thought she was gone. But she can't keep this up forever if, she, if he's ruining her ability to regenerate. He's like perfectly focused. Look at his face. Dead focus. Bloody eyes at all. Oh, there's that. There's that instinct. Damn! What the hell? <laughs> Is this it? Is this it? How do you have time to think right now? Why? Why? Oh, he wasn't- he hasn't been breathing this whole time! He was literally on the verge of death. Yeah, she's got him rattled though. Right, let's not forget he, his torso got splintered. Your reinforcements? Yeah. Oh, and this would just kick her head off. A little electrocution for good measure too on the way out. I forgot she was here actually. Damn. I kicked her skull off. Oh, it's great that we live in the era of not changing our clothing. <laughs> she also knows sleeping. Even now he wants her advantage of fighting humans. Maybe there can be two of her. Like a starfish. That's pretty fast. She's definitely Tanjiro's family member. <laughs> Interesting. That's good to know. From a power perspective. Oh, plants! Plants are... She pl has plants. <laughs> As the intro has foretold. And a, and a horn! She has a different form as well. Andrew just taking a nap. And flashback. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. They, yeah, they got a lot of in common. Am I reading this right in this being a warning for Tanjiro, a danger to himself? I mean, yeah, this is the guy who put himself in harm's way to save someone because if he died, it would make the other guy a murderer. Not a whole lot of self-preservation thinking in there. 
looks like 10 years older. Yikes. Well, she knows what she does well, and she does it. This opens up a lot of doors if Nezuko really is that powerful, if she's an upper-ranking demon. I mean, she's been doing a lot of sleeping lately, so... That would also be symbolically significant because it was Tanjiro's nature, and also the mercy of Giyu, that allowed this to even be a thing. I think one key characteristic of Tanjiro as a character that makes him significant to the story, and why it's focused on him as the protagonist, is that he's different. It's not his power that makes him special. In fact, in some ways, he seems like he's not as much of a natural as others. The extent to which he's strong in fighting seems to be more a function of his heart and his drive, and his strength narratively is his heart, and his outlook, and his compassion. So Nezuko being an upper-ranking demon on their side, I think fits pretty well with that thematically. <laughs> Asking the important logistical questions. <laughs> very, very practical. Thanks. What am I going to do without learning about their favorite snacks or polygamy? So that was an awesome episode. The action was top tier, I'd say, even for this show. The would-be, but not quite, next slice was amazing. But more importantly, and I think what, what makes it extra satisfying beyond just the visuals, is the fact that there's a lot that this represents. There's a couple things happening at once. I mean, there's the history and the fact that they've just been pushed to the edge all this time. You can feel the tides changing, not only because of Nezuko showing up and, you know, having the power that she has, but because of Tanjiro changing. Tanjiro being more centered, it seems like that incident, born from her arrogance, sort of connected him in a key way. There's the fear from Muzan, and also sort of a warning from the younger brother that Tanjiro is on a path that puts him in a lot of danger, which I think to some extent is obvious, but the reflection is interesting to appear there. It seems like this demon is pretty screwed if Tanjiro can get to that level, and if Nezuko is there, what happens when the other three show up?